Hi, I'm Anthony Fisher for Reason TV, and I'm here with Haifa Al Mansour, the director of the new film Wajda. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Wajda is the story of a young Saudi girl with an independent, even rebellious streak and her quest to buy a bike. It's the first feature film shot entirely in Saudi Arabia, and by extension, the first Saudi film directed by a woman. Mm -hmm. So congratulations on that. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and this is your first foray into filmmaking. Yes. That's pretty incredible. That is my first feature, but I've done like a documentary and mm -hmm. a few uh, shorts. I had read that you had to direct some scenes via walkie-talkie. This is kind of like art as cloak and dagger. The country is segregated, and when we are, whenever we are outside, I wasn't able to be with the crew because it is not expected in, in the country. It's very conservative. And really, we don't want to create a scene. And it's a small budget film, and we don't want to delay all, all that. They had a monitor for me and a walkie-talkie and I used that walkie-talkie to the maximum. <laughs> I screamed at them and I just shouted, make the frame wider! <laughs> to be very clear to our audience that may not be aware, movies are banned. There is yes. no, there are no movie theaters in Saudi Arabia. So how does one become a, a lover of the art form of film in Saudi Arabia? It exists a lot in Saudi on, on via DVD and VHS. But yeah, you can watch film in privacy at home, but you cannot watch them in public. Can you talk a little bit about Wajda's little rebellions and what they represent? I wanted to, to depict a character that will never give up, a character that is willing to embrace life and fight for it. And not in a way like to be radical, to be against or anything, but just to have a dream and pursue it. And I think such messages are very important in the Middle East. Because to have a change, you really need to change your heart and make yourself happier in everyday life. And also it needs a lot of work and a lot of persistence. And a lot of people think if they change the regime and their life will be all okay all of a sudden and it doesn't happen and, and there is a lot of a disappointment because change needs a lot of dedication and a lot of work. Wajda subverts the oppressive system that she's living under and saves money th for her bike through trade and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Do you see free trade as a liberating force? I think it's, yeah, it's very important to find um, solution to things and to find your own voice and because there is so many obstacles in everyday life and especially for women they learn how to uh, maneuver it they know how to work around it i also wanted to tell an emotional story a story that is engaging i grew up watching a lot of hollywood films <laughs> and i knew how much power is there and to be to, to bring a story that is uplifting and that touches people and that changes so much in and how people think and how people see the world does any hope exist for the rights for saudi women or do they have to do what you did and leave Oh, no, I didn't leave. I go back to my hometown all the time. It is a very hard place for women because it is conservative and tribal, to excluding women from the public life. And But I think there is hope. And by saying that, it's not like by going outside and demonstrating because this is easy. It is easy to go outside and spend the night shouting and then you go home. It is, But it's difficult to start to making things and a real desire to embrace love and becoming more tolerant and appreciating art and things like that. This doesn't, don't come over night, it needs time to grow on. I mean, the film is very slice of life, and while the teacher and the father kind of take on villainous roles, it almost seems like the antagonist is Saudi society itself, thwarting this lovely and smart girl's attempts to explore and express herself. Where among the, the male society in Saudi Arabia is the change going to come? From Abdullah, the guy she loves, <laughs> she, she, she has a crush on. <laughs> so that is, I think, from the young generation, from Wajda and her friend, because they are growing up in a different world where they have access so, to so many things that I, when I was a kid, didn't have. They have internet, and Wa'ad Muhammad, when we auditioned her, and she doesn't speak any English, I asked her to sing because there is a reciting part. And she started singing for Justin Bieber <laughs> perfectly, but she doesn't speak English. And, and they have access to pop culture, and they know how the world is, and I think they want to, to fall in love and be and and move away from being so much conservative and so on that culture that sometimes is um, denies them a lot of things that makes them happy. There's a scene where Wajda and Abdullah are walking past a suicide bomber's funeral and he talks about the bomber's reward of 72 virgins and Wajda playfully imagines blowing herself up and getting herself a new bike. There's a universal innocence here to some real harsh realities. What kind of feedback have you gotten from that scene? Mixed. I think I haven't got any direct ones, but I feel people feel awkward. It's supposed to be funny and people don't laugh. They don't know if they should laugh or shouldn't. 
again, I just wanted to bring life and have people discover things for themselves. I wasn't trying to be judgmental or trying to say things um, and direct people towards something in particular. But I see sometimes interesting stuff happening in, in the society uh, around me. I feel it is interesting. That incident is very interesting and says something a lot, projects more about the culture and, and all that. So I put it in a film and hoping people will find the same thing. Well, thanks so much for talking with us. Haifa Al-Mansour, the director of the new film Wajda. For Reason TV, I'm Anthony Fisher.